to get a, a win at this point? Sure. I mean, that's, uh, that's what we try to do every week. And I, and I know that that sounds, you know, cliche, but it's, it's one week. Um, win or lose, you move on to the next one. You try to do everything you can to fix the mistakes and make the corrections. Uh, get the players to understand, get the coaches to understand um, what the players are learning and uh, how they how they can execute it during the game and then look at the good stuff and say, guys, like we have to continue to try to do this, um, build a game plan uh, and try to get them prepared. And we're going to start that uh, on the field here in a little bit. What's the precedent for somebody like Mahomes? I mean, he's a really <laughs> exceptional talent. Is there anybody who his game reminds you of? Um, again, the, the comparisons in this, in this league are always um, difficult. Um, he's a fantastic player. Um, you know, does a lot with the football, very quick with the release. Um, makes a lot of great decisions in the RPO game. Um, very accurate outside the pocket, can, can create, um, keep plays alive. You know, and I think the longer that he does that, then the more opportunity for those guys that can run um, to, to get downfield. And that's, um, you know, that's where the play extension uh, is, is critical that we try to limit that. The game against Evans where LaShawn was called into action maybe didn't go as, as well as LaShawn hoped now uh, with Butler out. Where, where do you pick things up in the second game? Well, I would say that that... Um, you know, that game, I, I don't think anybody, you know, I don't think Deshaun was um, responsible for, for 198 yards. Um, again, you know, you try to look at matchups and you try to, um, you know, identify, you know, when you can play man, when you can play zone, when you want to try to have eyes on the quarterback, when you want to try to have help, um, how, to, how to play guys that are big receivers. Uh, such as, let's say, Sammy Watkins this week, um, a bigger player um, with speed, but then you know, guys that have speed and are smaller and quicker guys and how you, how you play Hill and Hardman um, and Robinson. So um, there, there's a lot of challenges. They have a, a few backs that they run the football with, um, not to mention you know, probably um, you know, the best tight end in the league. How have you felt about where Malcolm was? You know, the thing I always appreciated about Malcolm um, was his competitiveness. And, um, you know, I know it wasn't perfect, but um, certainly always appreciated his competitiveness um, and how he attacked and how he finished plays. Um, so, you know, w wished, uh, wished that he hadn't got hurt, but, but we understand that that's uh, the unfortunate part of this business. Offense you have in Sims to sort of take that next man up mentality. That, that's again why why guys are here on our roster is so the that we have confidence in them that they have to go in the game and they have to play for us um, that they'll be ready and that's why they practice that's why they try to improve uh, each and every week and so um, you know there's a lot of guys that get opportunities in this league and um, do some really good things with it and then we're confident that uh, you know that's what Lashawn will do. Jalen can coach your protocol, or is he good? Uh, no, he's not good yet, but I say that he's progressing uh, well. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to do in the last couple stages to to pass through that. Um, you know, the entire protocol, but uh, he he's working on it. Will Durrell or Delaney practice today? Um, again, we'll we'll find out here in a little bit. Um, usually, they don't do a whole lot on Wednesday, anyways. So. You know, based on how they feel, uh, we'll see where they're at towards the end of the week. For, for Jeffrey against the Panthers, does he continue to respond well to the increasing workload? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think physically, yes. And, um, you know, to just think he's only had probably a handful of practices uh, with us. Um, there's a lot of things that come up in the game that can, can be better. Um, there's a lot of... Um, you know, just checks and communication that he's getting for the first time. And that's, you know, we're kind of just throwing him in there, not having had training camp and a lot of practices. But I'd say his attitude's been fantastic. And again, the most important thing is that he's able to continue to add um, those snaps and that, that workload that you mentioned and, and, and factor in some plays. And then, you know, I know there's a lot of plays that he would like to improve on and, and some techniques that he'd like to improve on. Ryan Tannehill 
suggested that maybe the time that he had with A.J. Brown in, in training camp when kind of both were on the second team might sort of help their chemistry a little bit, the fact that they played a good bit together. Have you seen some evidence uh, of that in the, in the games Ryan has started? I think the quarterback's job is always going to be the same. Is he's going to try to get us in the right play and, and throw to the guy that he feels like is open and, and gives him the best chance to, to gain yards. And um, whether that's A.J., Janu, um, A.J., Tajay, um, Corey, you know, that's, you know. And, again, I think that they probably have um, had – thrown the ball more to him just because that's where they were in, in preseason. But, you know, I, I hope that Ryan feels comfortable throwing to anybody that's that's open out there. With that ball down the sideline, the long ball to, to A.J., pretty good coverage. What does that suggest about, you know, maybe his, his uh, trust in, in A.J. To, to go up and get those kind of catches? Um, you know, I think we, we have to be able to try to hit some of those. We have to be able to um, – you know, get some of those plays downfield and, and try to let our receivers, um, like Tajay did at the beginning of the game, um, draw a penalty, um, or like AJ did um, on the play that you're mentioning, um, you know, go make a play. We we have to be able to do that. Um, and again, that's that's giving them a ball, giving them a chance not to, you know, throw it out of bounds or, you know, put it too far in the middle of the field or, you know, I think just giving him a chance to make a play, and, and that's what AJ did. What do you preach in the secondary when you face a guy like Mahomes, who, as you mentioned, gets outside the pocket, makes plays on the run? I mean, what, what are the challenges you, when you face a guy like that? I think that you just have to say that you have to cover him a little longer and, until you hear, you know, the whistle or the, or the crowd. Or I mean, it's just that you know, watching this third down, um, you know, guys will take a peek back, and then somebody uncovers and. You know, the quarterback's still alive and he makes a throw. He can throw across his body. He can throw it downfield. Um, so you just can't ever relax when they go out there and, you know, the route may seem to come to an end and they kind of relax and then all of a sudden they they burst on you. And I think that when you take it, that sigh of relief, um, you know, sometimes is when they get you. And, and hopefully we can limit those opportunities just by being able to coordinate the rush and, and, and keep, you know, the quarterback um, – you know, from throwing from a well. When you're facing a guy with rare speed like Tyreek Hill, how does that change the game plan? Well, I mean, I think you have to be conscious. You have to be smart of, of um, you know, where, where you're at and the shots that they like to take and, um, you know, making sure that you play with, you know, proper leverage and you, that you're on top and that, you know, you know we're, we understand that they have more X plays than any offense in the league. And that's... Um, you know, when they're able to hit those, those chunk plays allow them to change field position, uh, gain momentum. And so uh, he, he's a large part of what they do um, to, to get those explosive plays. He, he attacks the football um, when, when there's coverage and, and just, you know, like John mentioned, the trust that the quarterback has to, to throw it up to a certain player, uh, knowing that he's going to come down with the football. What's Derek? Routes, with his long development routes, double moves, is his ability to run those routes at that speed unique? Unique? Uh, sure. I mean, I think that, um, you know, some guys are straight line fast. I think that when you're, you know, you're a punt returner, I think you have agility, quickness, um, explosion, but but also speed, straight line speed. And, um, you know, that that's always the challenge when that guys can go sideways just as effectively as they can they can gain and build speed down the field. Um, they're always hard to cover. What's Derek like as, as a leader? Um, I think that Derek, um, you know, by by being, I would say good, very good. You know, and I think that um, I try to get him to to understand that that by his um, the way he practices, the way he finishes. Um, the way he conditions in the off season, the amount of time that he spends, how he performs uh, in conditioning and in the weight room, um, you know, the, the toughness in which he plays with, um, I think that that's how he leads. And um, you know, that we all have different abilities. And I know that um, when he does those things on the field or you watch him in the off season uh, do those things, it's certainly 
uh, would inspire me uh, if I was a player. What, what do you guys as, as coaches want the identity of the offense to be? Well, we want to be sound. We want to be physical. We want to be um, you know, obviously effective. Um, we, we want to be able to take advantage of um, teams' mistakes. I think sometimes I, I talk to the team um, as much as I can about being a football team that takes advantage of you know, mistakes that they make in the run game and in the pass game. If they're you know, a gap short that we have to take advantage of it, if they're um, you know, voiding a zone in the passing game, we have to be smart enough. They uncover somebody. You know, we have to be good enough and effective enough to take advantage of that. Uh, I, I want to play with an urgency. I think that we have to you know, play with a sense of urgency and, and dictate the tempo. And you know, we, we have to continue to try to be more consistent uh, with, with, when doing those things because I think there's evidence of a lot of those things. Um, I think a smart football team, a smart offense, um, a fundamentally sound offense, and you know, when you aren't some of those, that's when you um, – create those longer yardage situations and that get back on track. You need to win a football game, obviously, which should be motivation enough, but is there a challenge that, is there a challenge that goes with having a bye week on the horizon as far as keeping guys focused, you know, making plans for the bye week? I mean, do, do you fight that as a coach to make sure guys are locked in the week before bye week, or is that even an issue? I mean, I hope that we're focused on trying to to get to five and five uh, against a, a tough opponent, um, you know, I I think it's been long enough for us um, to have not have a bye. So, you know, one more week. I, I I just I'm not sure if the emphasis on that. The emphasis is on trying to prepare and in the meetings and have great practices, play a game, and then and try to recover the best that we can. I think it is about. Taylor Luan's playing style that has led to so many face mask penalties, and how can you, how can you counter that? I guess how can you? Change? I, I, my son plays left tackle. Taylor plays left tackle. Um, you'd have to ask Taylor. I tell him not to grab the face mask. Like that's that's all I can tell you. You know. Set out to him. no no, but I mean I again like what. <laughs> it, it, I, I, John, I, I wouldn't know where to begin to tell him try to teach him not to grab the guy's face mask. Stay in front of him. Um, and then you won't have to grab anything on him or hold him um, or grab his face mask. Like some of these things I, I think are, are, are comical that you could expect me to coach a guy not to grab. No, that's the question that you asked me, so I'm trying to help you. I, I, I can't, at some point in time, like my hands are up. I can't teach you not to grab the guy's face mask. Just like I'm trying to teach Kenny and Kevin relentlessly about how to be able to dislodge the football down the field on a defenseless receiver, not hit him in the head or neck when that player is still protected when he lowers his target. And Kenny looks at me and he's like, coach. And I'm like, Kenny, if it's lower he goes, the lower you got to go. Like, I'm, I'm with you there. Like that one, there's some tricky ones that we're trying to work through as we teach penalties. Uh, but I would say that grabbing the face mask is one I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on other than trying to stay in front of your guy. Outside of face mask, because last year this team wasn't really penalized that much, but this year it's kind of changed. So outside of the face mask, where is the breakdown? Is it technique? Is it fatigue? Where, where is the breakdown? Well, if we go back and just look at um, Sunday, you know, I know that um, you know, we had on, on special teams – um, a, a tough call, you know, and, and again, when we watch and we break down these special teams, whether it's against us or on another team, when guys fall down, the guy that you're blocking, that when he falls down, that's a big red flag to those guys because on, on special teams plays, uh, 20 guys, 21 guys minus the kicker um, are all running around and they see a lot of bodies and sometimes they don't really see a hold or they're not really sure. But when guys fall down, you know, it kind of draws a red flag. And I, whether Bates held the guy or not, I know the guy he was blocking fell down and, and they called a penalty. So we try to say, hey, Bates, you know, try to keep him up and you know, keep your hands inside. Um, false starts, 
you know, we, we have to use our cadence and we practice our cadence and practice um, something that when it works and it goes well, uh, we're able to get yards and we're able to be disciplined. We're able to get free yards or take shots down the field on free plays. Uh, but when we don't, um, our excitement level or whatever it is to, to, be, to get into that block, when we move on, off, you know, we move and we flinch, uh, that costs us five yards. Um, holding, you know, I mean, I, I, again, I, I don't want to go through all the things that we turn in um, and, and the results, but I would say that most of the things that we turn in are, are pretty favorable um, to, to where, you know, we're, we're doing it okay. I mean, we have to do it better, and we understand the penalties um, hurt us, but some of them, you know, I get the aggressiveness. Bates had a use of the helmet. Uh, we teach that um, extensively. John, to your point, that's one that we can, we can coach. That's a player safety issue to try to be able to play uh, with our faces up and not in a posture that would be linear uh, with our head down. And so that one got coached at length and showed at length um, about how we need to try to properly play. One, so that we're, 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 we're safe as we possibly can. And then the other one is, is that we aren't getting penalties. Wayne backs against the wall, sees another uh, line, or is it just the next game? Of the it's in the National Football League. Every game is, is probably as must win as you can get. Um, it's the next one. It's a, it's a great challenge. It's a heck of an opponent. Um, our guys were focused this morning already. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that when we go out to the practice field, we can carry the meetings um, out to the field and, and be able to uh, start the week off on a, on a great note. Thanks, guys.